This guide is going to show you how you can wirelessly connect to your Fire TV stick or Fire TV cube on your Windows based PC. If you're watching this video as a short, tap on the thumbnail in the bottom right hand corner right now to see the full video. If you're already watching the full video, hold tight, more details coming up shortly. Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things help us make more great videos for you. So as I say, this guide is going to show you how you can connect and remotely control your Fire TV stick or cube from your Windows PC. Now I should stress straight away that you should be or must be on the same Wi-Fi network as your Fire Stick, as your laptop. So you can't do this remotely. Make sure that both are on the same Wi-Fi network. So go across first of all to the settings cog and then go down to my Fire TV middle button Go down to developer options. Now, if you haven't got developer options, then go into about. Make sure that you've highlighted the name of your device. So mine is the Fire TV Stick 4K Max. Make sure that's highlighted in white and just keep pressing the middle button on the remote control until you see the words no need. You're already a developer appear at the bottom of the screen like it has mine. Once you see that, press the back button on the remote once and you should then see developer options. Go down to it, middle button, and then make sure that ADB debugging is switched on. So if it's switched off, then highlight it, middle button to turn it back on. Keep pressing the back button until you get back to this screen here. Go back up to about middle button and then go down to network. And what you want to do is you want to make a note of the IP address, not my IP address, whatever appears on yours, as I can guarantee they won't be the same. Then what you need to do is you need to restart your Fire Stick or Cube. So this is very important. Press the back button once, go down to restart, middle button, and then go across to the second restart there, middle button, and let your device restart. Once it's restarted, then you want to hop onto your laptop. So once you're at your laptop, open up your browser. I'm going to open up Edge. And then once it's open, go to the address bar at the top of the screen, not the search bar in the middle, but the address bar right at the very top. And then what you want to do is you want to pop in this address. If you need to pause this video, write this down, type it in, do whatever you've got to do, and then unpause the video. So once you've typed in that address as it's shown on the screen, then press enter or return on your keyboard. And if you've typed in the correct address, you should see this screen here. Scroll down slightly and go across to releases there and click on whatever's below releases. Left click once, then scroll down. And what you're looking for here is SCRCPY hyphen win 64. And then there should be a version number after it. That at the moment on mine says version 2.1.1, but that may change in time. So it doesn't matter. Click on whatever's there with Win64. Let it download. Hopefully shouldn't take too long. Once it's downloaded, you can either click on open file up there or you can go to any yellow folder on your screen and then go to downloads just over there and then right click on the file you've just downloaded. Left click extract all and here it's asking us where do we want to put it. So what I want to do is I'm just going to click in there and I'm just going to delete all the way back to SCRCPY. Make sure that you've done the same. So just delete back to SCRCPY. Click on extract. Then what we want to do is we want to go back to our browser and we want to type in this address again in the top of the screen here. So this is the address you need, the one at the top of the screen there. So again, pause this video, write it down. And then once you've typed it in, then you want to press enter or return on your keyboard. And hopefully if you've typed in the correct address, you should see this screen come up. Scroll down and again, look for releases and click on whatever is below release. So left click once on that and then scroll down here on that side. And we are looking for this file here, GUISCRCPY hyphen PYQT5 hyphen X64. Left click once 
on that. Now this bit might take a bit longer to download because this is quite a bit bigger file. Just be patient with it and hopefully shouldn't take too long. As you can see, mine's about halfway through and it's now downloaded, but it's basically given us a warning saying that it's not commonly downloaded. Make sure you trust it. So let's just click, move our mouse over that file, click on the three dots and go keep. So left click keep and then click on the little arrow down beside show more and click on keep anyway. What we wanna do is wanna close down the browser and wanna go back to the downloads folder. And we wanna find this file that we've just downloaded, this GUI, SCR, CPY, blah, blah, blah. So move our mouse over it, click on the right mouse button. If you're running Windows 11, click on the scissors. If you're running Windows 10, click on cut. Then double click on SCRCPY and then double click on the second folder which says, says SCRCPY hyphen Win64 and then the version number and just right click anywhere on a blank area. And if you're running Windows 11, click on this icon here. If you're running Windows 10, click on paste. The next thing we want to do is we want to right click on the GUI SCR CPY hyphen PYQT5 hyphen X64. Click on properties and then just put a tick in the box there that says unblock at the bottom of the screen. Then click on apply, then click on OK. Double left click on GUI SCR CPY hyphen PYQT5 hyphen X64. And you'll get this come up it says SCRCPY hyphen server could not be found. Please locate manually. So just scroll down this list and we're looking for SCRCPY hyphen server. There it is. Double click that. Next thing we need to do is we need to tell the device what device we're connecting to or the IP address of the device we're connecting to. So I'm just going to click this little Wi-Fi icon there. And I'm just going to click down there TCP IP and I'm going to click in where it's got cannot find your IP address. So I'm going to type in there the IP address that I found earlier on my Fire TV stick. Click on connect and then click on the cross just up there and then click on start SCR CPY. And then hopefully after a few seconds, you should get your Fire TV stick appear on the screen. And what you can do is you've got this little menu bar here. You can move that out the way if you want. And these buttons here, you can move these out the way. So these sort of replicate the key presses on the remote control, these arrows. But not only that, you can also use your mouse here. So if you wanted to, you could go down, say for instance, to, uh, to YouTube and just double click on it and YouTube should then open up. And then the greatest thing about this is the fact that if you're looking for something on uh, the stick, if you're trying to download something, if you're typing in a username or a password, you can use the keyboard. So it just makes it that much quicker to do certain things. Unfortunately, there are a few drawbacks to this. Uh, one of the things is there is no sound, so you can't transmit the sound. Unfortunately, the sound service is only available on devices running Android, I think 11 and above. Whereas the, at the time of recording this video in 2023, Fire TV sticks and cubes run a, a lower Android than version 11 or 12, unfortunately. So it's just not going to work at this moment in time. Although somebody could develop something later on, which might allow Fire Sticks to, uh, to pass the audio through to the, uh, the laptop. But also I should point out, you've probably noticed this, the speed of the screen isn't great. I mean, what you can do is you can reduce the bit rate, which does reduce the quality, but makes it a bit more snappier. So I've just reduced my bitrate to 1992. Click on start screen copy again or SCR copy. And you'll probably notice that now I've done that, hopefully, yeah, it's a bit more sort of responsive, a bit quicker at updating the screen. Now, the problem is with this is 
if you end up going too low, let's just take it down to the minimum there and show you what happens. The screen runs absolutely quick, but the quality is very, very blocky, unfortunately. So, uh, so that's no good. But uh, like I say, I'm just going to tip it back up to around about the 2000 mark. What other options have you got in here? Well, you could have got an option here to record the screen if you want to. Um, you can make it full screen. So we can tick full screen just there. Click on start screen copy. And uh, there you go. The screen goes full screen. These little icons down here, you've got the power button there. That's the, the menu button. There's the home button, which takes you back to the main home screen. You've got there the back button. You've got here volume controls. But as I say, unfortunately, on the Fire Stick and Cube at this moment in time, that is useless. You've also got the arrow keys there to move up, down, left and right. Although I've generally found the arrow keys on your keyboard and your PC is probably the best way to go about using this. And you can use the enter key to confirm an action, i.e. do what the middle button does. And if you wanna go back on anything, then you've always got the back key just down the bottom, just here. Or you can use the escape key to uh, go back as well. Or you can also use the right hand button on the mouse to go back to. So there you go. There's a great little way of connecting to your Fire Stick or Fire TV Cube without any additional hardware required. You can connect wirelessly. Like I say, it's not the fastest of, of ways of doing things. But if you're, say, entering passwords into an app or usernames and passwords, it does make life a lot more simpler if you can do it on a PC keyboard rather than directly in on the on-screen keyboard. I should say, if you want to come out of this once you've gone full screen, then, then you can hold down the ALT key on your keyboard and tap F4. If you've got a laptop, you might have to hold down ALT, FN and F4, but that will close this down and take you back to this screen here. Once you're at this screen here, you can just click on the cross up there and you can move this folder if you want to, the uh, SCR CPY folder to anywhere you like. You can move it to your desktop if you want. The one with the zip through it, this one here, you can actually delete that. So you can right click on it. If you're running Windows 11, click the bin. If you're running Windows 10, then you can just click on delete. So there you go, a great way of being able to connect your PC to your Fire Stick. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please help support this channel. Have a look in the description down below. We've got links down below to many, many services. If you're in the market for a new VPN or a Fire Stick or Fire Stick accessories, please consider buying or subscribing through these links as it really does help support this channel. It helps me to dedicate more time to researching and bringing you these videos. And whilst you're at my YouTube channel, why not stick around? Have a look through. I've got thousands of other videos right here, right now, covering all sorts of subjects. Hopefully whilst you're here, you're gonna find something to educate you, entertain you, amuse you, and maybe even save you some time and money.